Okay, so what we will look at now is how do I write reactions and how do I describe equilibrium between the extraction ligand that we had and the uh, the metal ion uh, that was there in the in the aqueous phase. That's what we are going to look at now. So um, here is uh, here is our uh, principle again. Uh, you could have a cation exchange reaction. So imagine that this MN plus it's a metal ion. So it could be cobalt. Let's say for example in the aqueous phase reacting with an RH. So RH is a H is the exchangeable proton. So it becomes R minus and H plus. It is not it is not ionized in the organic phase. It is like this phosphorus di to ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid. Remember this R H is like this P double bond O, O R, O R and O H. Now the R that I am writing is not the alkyl group. The R that I am writing is this whole group is now our R. So we could write the extractant as R H. So R is not the alkyl group. It is just the whole combination. So whenever there is a metal ion now in the aqueous phase, this RH now has a bond here. Imagine there is a bond here R and H. And this H is exchangeable because it can dissociate. So now the cobalt ions or the metal ions will get exchanged with this H and you will have NRM in the organic phase and H plus ions coming into the aqueous phase. Are you able to visualize? Just to help you visualize, imagine, imagine, let me go back. Let me just go back to some blank page. Yes. Okay, let's erase all this. Okay. So imagine that our aqueous phase, this is our aqueous phase, contains let's say cobalt ions and our organic phase contains a solvent, let's say dodecane, organic solvent and this di to ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid. So what is that? This is nothing but P double bond O, OH, OR, OR. Now we are going to depict it, this part we are going to write it as some R and H. Is that okay? So what we are depicting this as, this is the same as RH. But this RH, the bond between R and H is the bond between this O and H. So it is a polarizable bond, it can be dissociated, that H can behave like a H plus ion. So now the cobalt ions will go here and H plus ions will come out here, minus and H plus. But of course, cobalt has two positive charges, valency is two. So I need two such molecules RH, then I will have in the organic phase, so RH, RH is here. Okay. So now what I will get? is like this, the organic phase will be R, R, cobalt 2 plus and 2 H plus ions will come in the aqueous phase. Okay. I have cobalt ions here in the aqueous phase and I have R H in the organic phase. So now the equilibrium is established not with one species, equilibrium is established by all these four species. All these four species. Do you agree with that? So now, if I have to write the reaction, I would write the reaction like this. So I have M N plus cobalt, let's say cobalt 2 plus ions, N is 2, will require two exchangeable 
protons from the di to ethyl exyl phosphoric acid kind of a moiety the metal ion will now complex with this n two such compounds two such r groups if you want you can even uh, write this as rm or you can write it as rnm or whatever whatever way you want and you will have n h plus ions coming into the aqueous phase n aqueous phase just a small correction just a small correction uh, one second let me just correct it small correction is here one second right oops yeah this is not rm this is n groups of r have n groups of r have reacted r n n groups of r have taken up that m and this of course it is not rm raised to n it just rm in the organic phase just edit yeah right now it is proper Okay, now oh, this should be R N N. This is also we can write it is R N. R N. All right. So that's how you would write the reaction equilibria. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, this is a cation exchange kind of a reaction. You could have an anion exchange. So anion exchange would be you have an anion in the aqueous phase. So let's say in the aqueous phase, I have let's say acetate ions are there in the aqueous phase. I would like to take out these acetate ions from the aqueous phase. I could use a quaternary ammonium chloride. So this could be our quaternary quaternary ammonium chloride. So look at this R3 N H plus A minus. Right? So imagine I have ammonia. NH, NH, NH. Right? Ammonia. Now instead of ammonia, I could have a C8 H17. C8 H17. C8 H17. So ammonia is not soluble so much in an organic solvent. Let's say dodecane. But if I replace the H plus H H atoms by alkyl groups, now this would be tri octyl amine. Tri octyl amine. Now this will be highly soluble in the organic phase. It has now enough enough organic character, enough covalent character to make it soluble in the organic phase, like a dodecane. Now, if you add HCl to this amine. You could have a quaternization of the nitrogen. So you will have a quaternary nitrogen. So you will have trioctyl amine hydrochloride as a salt. This trioctyl hydrochloride is our quaternary ammonium 
chloride it is quaternary quaternized nitrogen now this chloride that is there now this is organic soluble now this chloride ion will now be can be now exchanged with some of the other anions in the aqueous phase right so we'll get r3 nh plus b minus in the organic phase and a minus will come in the aqueous phase so again what i am saying is if this is an aqueous phase let's say aqueous phase contains acetate ions and this contains r3 nh plus a minus r3 nh plus a minus the a minus ions can be exchanged with these acetate ions if you like so i will have a quaternary ammonium acetate in the organic phase and the chloride will come in the aqueous phase so now the reaction equilibria that we can write the equilibrium constant for the reaction would be like this r3 nh plus b minus concentration of this in the organic phase concentration of this in the aqueous phase divided by concentration of r3 nh plus a minus in the organic phase and b minus in the organic phase uh, in the aqueous phase the equilibria so important point is to what is the reaction that you are writing and what is the equilibria that you are writing what is the reaction that you are writing now this is a liquid anion exchanger anion exchanger it is exchanging anions from the aqueous phase with the anions in the organic phase the corresponding reaction and the corresponding equilibrium expression or you could have a metal ion in the aqueous phase or some uh, compound in the aqueous phase you would want to form a complex coordination complex with l that is our ligand so it could be our tributyl phosphate now there is no exchangeable proton tributyl phosphate remember what it was it was p double bond o o c4 h9 o c4 h9 o c4 h9 tributyl phosphate tributyl phosphate so this multiple of such ligands with the lone pair of oxygen let's say n such groups form or react with this m to give you an l n m complex so the kex would be now concentration of this complex in the organic phase divided by concentration in the met in the aqueous phase and concentration of the ligand in the organic phase raised to power n or i could have a combination of ion exchange and complexation look at this i could have n charged metal ion reacts with n exchangeable protons like dituethyl hexyl phosphoric acid but the dituethyl hexyl phosphoric acid still has the o still has the o so it can take part by complexation as well so then x molecules of that would react by complexation mechanism so the ion exchange mechanism and the complexation mechanism and you will get back the nh plus ions in the aqueous phase Do you agree with that so then now the equilibrium constant i could write by this exchanged plus complexed in the organic form in the organic phase 
and h plus ions in the aqueous phase raised to power n metal ion and the rh the ligand in the organic phase raised to power n plus x okay. so what i want you to do is to think about what is the equilibrium reaction that we can write and correspondingly we can write the equilibrium constant in terms of the concentrations and now these concentrations not are not in the same phase because your ions are in different phase so these concentrations are in different phases take this again for example take this again for example this m metal ion is in the aqueous phase this rh is in the organic phase the ion exchange metal is in the organic phase the h plus ions are there in aqueous phase so when we write the equilibrium the concentrations when we write the equilibrium expression the kex equilibrium constant is equilibrium constant would have concentrations in the specific phases aqueous phase organic phase organic phase aqueous phase okay. are you able to visualize are you able to understand how we are writing the equilibrium clear Okay. So, next thing that we are going to do is look at how do you uh, write these and how do you evaluate these equilibria. Okay, next. So, imagine initially I have RH and I have metal ion N plus metal ion. So, if wherever if you have doubt in or wherever you have difficulty in imagination, you can assume it is cobalt ions. Okay. Now, this is a reaction that we had written complexation plus ion exchange. The N molecules of RH are complexing and the X, uh, sorry, the N molecules of RH are doing ion exchange reaction and the X molecules are doing the complexation. And wherever you have a doubt, this RH you imagine is your di ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid okay. so this r h is p double bond o o r o r o h and we seem to be running out of alphabets therefore this is what we are going to call as r and h r and h R contains the lone pair of oxygen and H is what is the exchangeable proton from the phosphoric acid group. Okay. At equilibrium, some of these metal ions will get exchanged, some of it will remain, some RH will remain and H plus will come into the aqueous phase. are you able to visualize are you able to visualize now we have to write an equilibrium between all these four species that are there so the kex that we have written the same in the previous slide kex is this h plus in the aqueous phase raised to power n this rnm dot xrh in the organic phase okay. too many arrows i just will make it clear let's try it a highlighter so the nh plus we are writing it as h plus in the aqueous phase raised to power n next this complex in the organic phase oops dark complex in the organic phase that concentration raised to power one only because it's only one the stoichiometry is one 
the metal ion is there in the aqueous phase. The metal ion that is there in the aqueous phase and the remaining now n plus x is the stoichiometry of this rh in the organic phase so then the rh organic raised to power n plus x are you able to visualize are you able to see this kx we will write it slightly differently now. Look at this, look at this expression for Kex. Come, we will write these first two, the, the one that is circled in red, we will write it as a first term. The H plus we will write here and Rh in the organic phase we will write here. Are you with me? Can you tell me what this red bracket is telling you? What is the red bracket telling you? Red bracket is telling you the concentration of the metal that has gone in the organic phase divided by concentration of the metal in the aqueous phase. Is that not the same as the distribution coefficient for the metal? Can I not write this red bracket as D? The distribution coefficient so now the kex would be distribution coefficient for the metal h plus in the aqueous phase raised to power n rh in the organic phase raised to power n plus x we have a relationship now between the equilibrium constant for the ion exchange reaction in terms of the distribution coefficient for the metal ion as if that metal ion was only partitioning between the aqueous phase and the organic phase it is not really partitioning it is doing an ion exchange reaction but because we were doing physical extraction we could write it in terms of our distribution coefficient that is how we write it as D. So, if I take log of both sides to the base 10, look at the left side, it becomes log to the base 10 equilibrium constant, log D, log D, remember we had seen octanol water partitioning coefficient, there also we took log to the base 10, that is how we have got that log D. Then we have N log to the base 10 H plus ions. And we have minus n plus x multiplied by log to the base 10 Rh in the organic phase. Just take a log of both sides. And look at this log to the base 10 H plus ions. What is that? What is log to the base 10 H plus ion concentration? Is it not minus pH? So, if I measure the pH of the aqueous phase, now I am able to relate the equilibrium constant Kx with the distribution coefficient for the metal ion. The pH of the aqueous phase, pH of the aqueous phase, and log to the base 10, this concentration in the organic phase of this RH. RH is what is my ligand that is reacting. Ligand that is reacting, that is our RH. Are you with me? I can rearrange this as well, log to the base 10 T. I can bring on the left side or I can keep on one side log to the base 10 kx plus n pH n multiplied by pH plus n plus x into log to the base 10 Rh. 
now the advantage is advantage is we can measure this d d can be measured what do i have to do for measuring d i have to allow equilibrium to take place i take a sample of the organic phase i analyze for the metal content i take the sample of the aqueous phase i am analyze it for the metal content ratio is my d d can be measured by experiments pH can be measured by experiments. In the aqueous phase, I can take a sample and measure the pH. So this D I can measure, pH I can measure, D I can measure, the pH I can measure. This can be measured, pH can be measured. Now, if you look at the RH in the organic phase, this is related, so the initial RH that I started with, right, it must have gone into what is the RH at equilibrium and how much RH is actually complexed with the metal ion. Let me, let me give you an example, let me give you an example, right. Suppose I had started here with 10 moles of RH in the initial condition. If I allow equilibrium to take place, let's say I have 4 moles of RH in the RH form and 6 moles of RH are occupied here, are in this complex form. Right. Then, that's what I am trying to say. Whatever total moles I had taken, if I take the phase ratio as 1 is to 1, whatever total moles I have written, I can write in terms of the, uh, write in terms of the concentration as well. Right. What I actually should I have done is I should have V volume of the organic multiplied by RH organic, V into RH organic, V into RH in the organic phase, right? So this is actually, I don't need it because I am only writing a balance for the organic phase. Right? This is the total moles that I had taken initially or total concentration that I had taken initially that must be equal to whatever RH is there in the free form, free to react form, plus it is this in the complex form. Actually, it should be n plus x into this concentration. This should be actually n plus x into this concentration because n moles of r are there and x moles of r are there. So, actually, I should be writing it as n plus x. Let me just make that correction just so that people are comfortable. I should actually take this as n plus x if you want. So, as if we are writing a balance for R. As if we are writing a balance for R. Are you able to visualize? So, whatever R I had initially started with, part of it is now as Rh and part of it is now as Rn and R. Now, suppose I had taken cobalt was 100 ppm, but this was like a 5 molar solution or a 1 molar solution or a 2 molar solution. So, moles wise, even if all the cobalt gets exchanged, very small amount of this RH is going to be in the complexed form. This is going to be very small as compared to whatever is the free RH remaining in the organic phase at equilibrium. So then, let me just make this bigger, right. Then, then, speak to the actual. 
then if this is the case then rh remaining in the organic phase at equilibrium is practically the same as rh that i had initially taken so if my metal ion is very small amount as compared to the organic extractant then rh in the organic phase at equilibrium is practically the same as rh in the organic initially now you look at this final expression now you look at this final expression d i can measure experimentally d can be measured experimentally d can be measured experimentally ph can be measured experimentally whatever rh i started with initially i know that now i can vary my experiments i can vary the ph in my experiments i can vary the free rh in my experiments and i can measure d i can measure the d now if i plot a graph or if i do regression of this d as y versus this ph as x1 and this rh as x2 if i now do a linear regression between y and x1 and x2 the intercept would be log to the base 10 kx one slope would be n and the other slope would be n plus x so the advantage is now the equilibrium constant i can evaluate and the stoichiometry i can evaluate so advantage of this is i have related the kx and d it allows us to estimate reaction equilibrium constant and it allows us to estimate stoichiometry why do we want to estimate stoichiometry because we don't know how many ligands are complexing how many ligands are complexing with the metal ion whether it is one ligand that is complexing or two ligands are required or three ligands are required or four ligands are required that can be found experimentally did you see you realize the advantage of this so what we'll do now is take some data from the literature i will tell you where this data is coming from i will give the reference corresponding reference paper as well and we will find the kx and the stoichiometry for that data all right before that i'm just giving you some examples from the literature so imagine that we had metal ions like iron cobalt nickel copper in the aqueous phase and in the organic phase and we use different kind of extractants in the organic phase right so for example we use sinex 272 then the cobalt in the organic phase versus cobalt in the aqueous phase this is like our how we used to plot our distribution equilibrium curve we plotted p in aqueous and p in organic remember that and we called it the equilibrium line the slope was our distribution coefficient d okay so here is an actual data from the literature so if i use sin x272 this is how the equilibrium relationship looks like for cobalt if i use pc88a this is how the equilibrium relationship looks like for cobalt if i use di2 ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid this is how the equilibrium relationship looks like in the for cobalt and if i do the same way for different metal ions so i do for iron zinc calcium copper magnesium cobalt nickel then if i use di2 ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid 
this is the order or this is the relative importance of the distribution question. Distribution question for iron would be highest. Distribution question for nickel would be lowest. Distribution question for iron would be highest, followed by zinc, followed by copper, followed by calcium, followed by cobalt, followed by magnesium, followed by nickel. Or using Sinex 272, iron followed by zinc, followed by copper, followed by cobalt, magnesium, calcium, nickel. So, if I have now my aqueous phase, let's say the aqueous phase contains iron and nickel. And now I suppose I use di 2 ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid in the organic phase. Which one is going to be extracted, iron or nickel? Which one would get extracted? Hello, yeah, preferentially iron. Right now, suppose I have. Now, suppose I have in the aqueous phase, I have let's say cobalt and nickel. Now you tell me, is it better to use di 2 ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid or PC88A or Sinex 272 if I want to preferentially take out cobalt from the aqueous phase? Should we use di 2 ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid? Should we use PC88A? Should we use Sinex 272 if I want to extract cobalt from a mixture of cobalt and nickel in the aqueous phase? Right, right, sin x 270 right? because that gives you a distribution coefficient for cobalt which is significantly higher as compared to nickel. If I use di 2 ethyl hexyl phosphoric acid, they are close to each other. PC88, they are slightly better off from uh, farther away from each other, but sin x, there is a big difference between cobalt and nickel. Cobalt will get preferentially exchanged in the organic phase. Okay, here is, uh, uh, let's go forward. Another example, right? So this paper, Das et al. 2015, uh, looked at extraction of uranium, uranium hexavalent six in the coordination state six, uh, using five percent sinex or in in paraffin. So paraffin is like dodecane sinex. So next to 72 and used different acids HNO3, HCl, H2SO4. So the distribution coefficient of uranium is plotted with respect to the initial acid concentration in the field. So I have one molar HNO3, one molar HNO3 or one molar HCl or one molar H2SO4. I have four molars of nitric acid or four molars of hydrochloric acid or four molar of H2SO. I have eight molar nitric acid or HCl or sulfuric acid. You see the distribution coefficient, this is a log scale. If I take one molar HNO3, the distribution coefficient is something like two, three hundreds. Whereas if I take H2SO4, the distribution coefficient is only 10. Here, if I take 4 molar nitric acid, the distribution coefficient is about 200. Whereas if I take 10 molar, 4 molar H2SO4, <coughs> distribution coefficient is only 2. So the presence of acid in the aqueous phase also makes a lot of difference to the distribution coefficient. Further, if you look at that paper, that paper they also looked at effect of type of extractant. Now this is in terms of with different concentration of nitric acid in the in the in the aqueous phase. So aqueous phase is going to contain HNO3 one molar or two molar or three molar or four molar or five molar or six molar, seven, eight and uranium 
at a concentration of 500 ppm. Okay. If you look at very low concentration of nitric acid, then dituethylhexyl phosphoric acid gives you a very high distribution coefficient, about 3-4000, whereas Sinex gives you a very low distribution coefficient, about 700-800. If you go to <coughs> large concentration of nitric acid, let's say 6 molar, then DEPA gives you a distribution coefficient of only about 70-80. Sinex gives you a distribution coefficient of about 150 200. Okay. So, you see the order also changes depending on the strength of the acid. Another example would be to look at the effect of ligand concentration. So, this is the ligand concentration. This is for sin X. This is PC88 and this is DEPA. As you see, as the ligand concentration goes up, the distribution coefficient also goes up. Okay, for all the three. So that's how you will do the experiments. You will find out the distribution coefficient and you will relate the equilibrium constant and the stoichiometry and <coughs> you can do this for different metal ions in the field so your field is let's say uranium or let's say your field is uranium plutonium mixture or field is a mixture of uranium along with some other metal ions like sodium potassium cesium then you can use this kind of analysis to find out which one would be selectively extracted okay. i'm just going to extract some data from these three figures, I have just extracted some data and I am giving you this data in the form of table. Right? I want you to calculate stoichiometry and the equilibrium constant for uranium extraction with sin x272 in presence of HNO3. I am going to give you this data. Okay? So, what we will do from the table, what we will do is from these figures, we will look at only the data of sin x272 that means this black curve we are not going to look at the red and the blue just now we are going to look at this black curve we are not going to look at the red and the blue just now and the blue curve here sin x272 the red and black i am not going to look at just now so this data the triangle data in the table I, I, from this figure, I will give it to you in the form of a table or this black data, I will give it to you in the form of a table or this black data, I will give it to you in the form of a table. Right? So, this is the data. I am just extracting the data for you. So, this is the data. Data is distribution coefficient right? versus the ligand concentration. 0.16 molar, 0 0.08 molar, 0 0.06 molar, 0 0.04 molar, 0 0.02 molar and so on and different concentration of the acid H plus ion concentration. Okay. So effectively what I have given you is look at this expression. Let us rub out all the arrows. I want you to look at only this RAST relationship. <coughs> I have given you data of distribution coefficient, pH, I have not given you pH, but I have given you the concentration of H plus ions, acid concentration, <coughs> acid concentration I have given you H plus. And the initial ligand concentration I have given you, RH organic initially. Why? Because the RH organic is very, very large as compared to, <coughs> as compared to, 
as compared to the initial concentration of uranium. <coughs> So all the ligand is essentially in the free form. <coughs> this is very, very small. The extracted metal ion is very, very small. So RH in the organic is same as RH initially. So I would like you to do multilinear regression of log D versus pH and RH in the organic phase. Okay, use this data. Okay, will you try that? Right, I think what I'll do is I'll just show you how uh, how it can be done quickly so that uh, uh, you have a fair idea of how it is to be done. Uh, let's just open Excel and I have taken this data in Excel. So this is our the expression that we want to fit log to the base 10D would be equal to log to the base 10 KX plus NPH N plus X log to the base 10 RH or if you want to write it in terms of H plus ion, yes, yes. Oh, uh, one second. Okay. So, uh, this is the data in Excel now. So, we have the distribution coefficient, we have the ligand concentration, we have the H plus ion concentration. Either we could use this first expression that is there in the form of pH, or we could use the second expression which has in the form of log to the base 10 H plus ion concentration because now I have given concentration in the H plus form, right. Uh, all I will need to do is take the log. So take log of this, log of this and log of this, okay. So if you want to do that, log to the base 10 of distribution coefficient we want, suppose, so this is log 10 to this so that's 2.9 and then we can just copy it then we want to do log to the base 10 of the h plus ion concentration or we want first let's say the rh you can go in order so we will log to the base 10 the rh concentration and then we can copy that and log to the base 10 H plus ion concentration. Now HNO3 is a strong acid. So whatever is the concentration of the acid, it, we assume it is to be completely, assume that HNO3 is a completely dissociated acid. Therefore, the concentration of the acid and concentration of H plus ions would be the, would be the same. So this would be log to the base 10, this H plus ion concentration. Okay. Now I can do a multilinear regression between this as a y. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Right, right. So we can either use this form, the first form pH, or we can use the second form, either way we like. Okay, we would like to use the pH form. Right, so we will do the pH here. Now this will I will have to do minus log to the base 10. Thank you. All right, happy. <laughs> okay, now so if I use the first one, that's this form. So what I would like to do is multilinear regression between this log to the base. 10 D pH and log to the base 10 RH in the organic phase. So let me just bring it on this side. pH is on, pH is the first variable and log to the base 10 RH is the second variable. So I can do now multilinear regression. So let's say data or 
data analysis if i do regression are you able to see properly i want regression between the input y and the x first variable is the ph and second variable is our log to the base 10 the rh concentration and let's say we want the output here Aha. so excel has done it now you see r square is 0.99 so that means this is a good fit 0.997 now tell me what is n now the first constant is n that is 0.78 the second constant n plus x is 2.2 and log to the base 10 kex is 4.45 so that's how you would do this regression. So if you go back to the slides now, just the results are here in the form of we have done taken log 10, we have put in now. So I have done it a little differently, um, but you see now the regression, the n is 0.78 and n plus x is 2.2 and log to the base 10 kex is 4.45 so we have been able to get the equilibrium constant what have we done what have we done we have written this reaction in this reaction we did not know how many moles of the ligand got exchanged how many moles of the ligand got complexed we also did not know about the equilibrium constant for this reaction but by doing this experiment yes okay one second so we did not know how many moles of the ligand took part in the ion exchange process how many moles of the ligand took part in the complexation process stoichiometry and we also did not know anything about the equilibrium constant but by doing experiments by measuring d by measuring distribution coefficient d at various concentrations of the ligand at various ph we have been able to get the stoichiometry our n is 0.788 or let's say 0.8 approximately n plus x is around 2.2 which means x is 1.4 and kex log to the base 10 kex is some four point something how much was that 4.45 right. or kex would be 10 raised to 4.45 10 raised to 4.45 would be more than 10,000 that's how much this equilibrium constant is there in the forward direction So we have been able to characterize this reaction by and get information about the stoichiometry about the equilibrium constant based on the experimental data like we have here. We took the data only for sin x in HNO3, took data only for sin x in HNO3 and sin x, the blue data. So this is how you would analyze this kind of data, get information about KEX, the equilibrium constant and the stoichiometry of the ion exchange reaction or the stoichiometry of the complexation reaction.